<laughs> Hearing none. One through eight. One through eight. That'd be good. Um, all right. So we're going to roll with the agenda we have. Next is communication from the audience. Anybody here to communicate anything that's not on the agenda later? No. I'm going to give the floor to our community development coordinator during my during here. Got it. Yeah. Uh, Next, select board to approve. We have two minutes. We had a uh, regular meeting on August 17th, and we also had minutes from a special meeting on August 30th. I read them. I thought they looked good. Second. So Sherry made a motion. Liz made a second. Any discussion on those? All in favor of approving the minutes as written for both meetings, please say aye. 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 I'm going to abstain from the regular meeting because I wasn't there. But okay. I for the special one. Got it. So uh, motion carries on um, both. Well, that's what people get. Uh, next <laughs> is town manager report given by David Upson. Well, that was quick. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> quick. Schedule. So I've got just some updates. Um, the state has coming out with um, guidance on river and stream debris, flood debris. Oh, they are. And we're going to put it up on the website, but they want um, the Department of Public Safety also issued some um, a request today. But we need to hear from residents that are spotting debris on private property so we can inventory it and report the debris uh, locations to the Vermont Emergency Management. And the operation center, so they can come up with a plan to to locate or to to get to our locations and clean up the debris. So Did we're just say the whole river. I was going to say. Can you just <laughs> say <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to just. I, I know where there's you know um, deposits. There's serious right. places. Some places that need serious attention. Right. For sure. So those serious those places right. um, I need to know about. Like, so. Yeah. I mean, one, one item here and there, we're going to... But there's stuff in the river, yeah. too, that yeah. we need to report. I'm sure. Yeah, and they... I did see that Bill got his vehicles out, though. <laughs> We've oh. been instructed not to go in the river with machinery and pull anything out of the river. Right. As well, they weren't in the river. The, state, the state is going to hopefully deal with that. So keep an eye out for this on the website, and um, hopefully we can get this all cleaned up before winter. Uh, there's also some um, programs throughout the last couple of weeks we've been just kind of matching up um, people, individuals with state and federal programs that are available for different, um, different events, um, whether it be their stream bank eroded on the edge of their property and it's potentially could cause damage later on. Uh, the NRCS is coming in next week, and we're going to be doing um, property visits. Um, we've a list. We've identified a list of properties. Um, so that work is ongoing. Um, there's also a program through the Department of Children and Families that I found out about today that they're going to extend another 90 days potentially is helping folks pay their sewer and water bills. Um, is that electric too or just sewer and water? Just sewer and water bills. Okay. I, I'm sure there's a program, but I, I don't, I haven't okay. come across it yet. So this will also be on our website. I found out about this today. Um, and then the Department of Children and Families, you can contact. This one is hard to find. Um, and Vermont Rural Water is helping with uh, with the advertisement of this. So keep an eye out on our website. Um, and this will pay back sewer and water bills, too. Oh. Yep. Um, we, I'll just give you an update on the wastewater plant. Um, we are moving forward with the sludge cleanout. We're going to start uh, washing down the lagoon banks. And the, the wastewater plant, the lagoon is Lagoon number one is starting to stink because it's emptying. So the sludge is, and you can smell it. I smelled it this morning, and I, I told uh, some of the folks on the west end of town that they would start to smell that. Um, so hopefully with the rain, it, 
the odor is not going to be too bad. We have to wash it. The liner is that goes. We, well, we have to wash all the solids down in. Right. And then we're going to move sense. some of the solids over to Lagoon too. We've decided that's what we're going to do. It's what we have to do. Yeah. It's our only yeah. option. We have to keep moving forward. Um, I've submitted, I've collected three different categories of damage down at the wastewater plant. I've submitted our uh, inventory to FEMA and I've, I've been updating it. I've sent them three updates. So this is the wastewater plant, the lift stations, and actually all the other damage around town as well. So um, that is an ongoing project. We keep updating with our uh, program manager. So we're in close contact with him. Um, we have our MOU draft posted on the website for the pedestrian bridge for the historic review. So people need, this is like the public comment period, so people can access that and read it. It's on our website. Um, there's a lot of information that we're putting on the website, so people need to like go to the website and keep track of all that information. Um, and then I just found out as well in our bridge meeting this morning that the foundation that washed out during the flood event, the foundation where the pedestrian bridge is under the park, we're going to actually submit that for. Um, well, it was the old. I think it was the old foundation, but it was holding back the actual retaining wall on the park. So you can, if you look over the edge of that, or if you look from the um, the diner parking lot, you can see the footing is is visible to the wall that where the park is there. So um, we're going to submit that the for- Main Street side. On the Main Street side, yeah. So we're going to submit that for um, for reimbursement or repair. Because um, that, I would categorize that as critical infrastructure that's holding up the wall on Main Street. Um, I think that's about it. There's a lot more, but just keep an eye on the website because we're putting up, we're putting in updates on the website. Weekly, daily. All right. I know it's an extra step, but it would be useful if somebody at the town office were to post on the front porch forum when significant updates have been put on the website. Because people don't usually, yeah. you know, it's a poll technology and people don't usually pay attention. You mean people don't have the website on their bookmarks <laughs> and automatically uh, pop up in their browser? You can understand it, but yeah. I think that's probably that's true. We had been putting, we had been putting stuff up on front porch forum. We can start doing that again. We usually do yeah. dual posts and I, we haven't been. But. But yeah, thank you for that. We'll we'll definitely add front porch forum. Yeah, right next to the. I know it's, but people don't. People need to have push stuff pushed at them. Spoon fed. Um, Were you gonna hand over to Tracy? Yes, Tracy. <laughs> okay. Um, so I am looking at a grant program. I wanted to bring you up to speed on, and also hopefully your approval to move forward. This is due on Monday for <laughs> the end of business, so been a bit of a crunch. Um, this is a program through the State Department of Buildings and General Services called the Building Communities Grants. And this Department of Buildings is all about like facilities and like stuff you build. So the cat the there are four categories in this grant program um, and the one we're I like to submit under is recreation facilities category. And um, so the plan, if you feel this is worth doing, is to apply to this program. Our total project would be to purchase two um, classic, um, two full-size kiosks. These are timber frame kiosks that are made in Vermont. Um, one would go at each of the trailheads that we're pretty certain at this point we're having, which is by the depot. Uh, and Creamery Road, and then the other full side one would be in East Hardwick, across from where the old depot used to be. And then we would be purchasing one of what they call their minis. It's still a timber frame, but it's a narrower kiosk that would replace the kiosk that's currently up by Memorial Park. That would be redeployed. One of our ideas is that we feel there should be consistency on uh, the amenities that are along the LDRT should kind of be of a type, so people recognize them. Um, 
and we have other we have other places we can use this, this kiosk. Also, part of this project would be uh, the purchase of three. The same company is called Timber Homes of Vermont. Um, the same company also makes uh, sign stands for uh, interpretive signage. So you know when you go to like a battlefield, they have those signs that are up. Okay, like, so they make a, a nice frame for those, and we'd like to get three of those. Two would be going over by the depot. Wiz has another project going <laughs> that would create the content and the actual sign that would be attached to this stand. But um, we'd also like to get the third one for East Hardwick. So these would be um, interpretive signs. People using the trail could stop and see where they were and what had happened here. And um, Wiz has a lovely donation from someone to the Historical Society specifically for this project, for the signs. So anyway, the total the total project cost would be, where do I have it? $15,340. The grant is just a 50% grant, so we would be asking for $7,670. But generous organizations in town have come up with most of the matching money. So um, the Eno, East Harbor Neighborhood Organization, has agreed to match whatever the cost is for the kiosk and the sign that goes in East Hardwick, they will pay half, which is the, the match. It's just shy of $3,000. Um, Historical Society will be giving us $2,800. That will basically cover the cost of both of those signs, which they are able to do through this nice gift that they got. And the Hardwick Downtown Partnership is probably contributing um, $500. We're waiting to hear from the board on that. But that would mean that we already had um, $6,300 in matching funds from outside organizations, which would mean the town would only need to come up with $1,370. So, and one thing that you would be. Motion to make a motion to approve the grant application so, for the yep. buildings and grounds, blah, blah, blah. Recreation. Second. Discussion. Discussion. No, I'm pretty sure she'll get it. Thank I you. Sat on that ranking committee for 12 years. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. I just got off actually. Oh, I, you're kidding. Yeah. You should see. Well, no, but you got it, so I can tell you what you need. Yeah. <laughs> and you have most of it. Okay. Certainly. So be prepared not to get it off, mm -hmm. because they, they, we yeah, just give them out. We give out what we got. Right. Um, so quite often, no one ever gets what they ask for. Mm. But everyone, you know, not everyone, but okay. try to spread the money out. So you got a huge amount of match from the community. Which is great. Gets, which is, that's a big one. Yeah. Um, get, make sure you show a lot of community support, which not just with the match, but get some other some stuff. Yeah. You, you'll get something out of it, I guarantee yeah. you. But be prepared to get something. That's, and tell them you'll take anything. Okay. Yeah, like, there is a question about that. Well, that's the reason I question is there. I bet you know who came up with that. <laughs> And it's because also it's true that Hardwick hasn't received anything on this Not particular grant. In, Actually, in a long time. Last year, in, none of them were given in Kelly. Not even in Kelly. Yeah, so <laughs> last year was the first year I was on board. Oh. <laughs> so that's always the geographical, spread it out geographically was always really important. Mm -hmm. Actually, a bunch of us aren't on it anymore. Warren Kitzmiller oh. passed away. And he was, um, mm -hmm. um, but anyway, they, there's, I think they're still following the same. Mind, mindset. It seemed like a year we should throw It's easy. Half, it's an easy grant to apply mm -hmm. for. The rules are really loosey-goosey, and the committee <laughs> gives them the money to whoever they want. There's no, um, you know, there's, but they, that's why we try to spread it out geographically, try to spread it out. So, and recreational trails has become, when I started, there was no recreational trail um, applications at all. Right. Now right. it's extremely popular. Okay. There'll okay. probably be a number of them. I'm guessing for the yeah. for the rail trail, but you put together a good, concise, simple, mm -hmm. not don't overdo it. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what that and committee I'll is all about. Yeah. I did call the staff person. I'm forgetting her name at the moment yeah, for that program. Judy still? I don't know if it is. Yeah. That sounds right. Um, because I wasn't sure they would let us pick the contractor we want to buy these from yeah. ahead of time, but she said that was no. Okay. I just you they gave yeah. me a check. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a great grant. Right? Well, so the, the kiosk match the, the, the LBRT's all, requirements yeah, all for what Just don't make it too big of a, a, an application because people, you know, want to get yeah. through it and just tell them what you need to know. But you got the big points, the, the match and the community support, you'll be fine. Great. So, 
we have a motion and a second. Before you vote in the interest of full disclosure, <laughs> like I should point out that this does not include installation of these. Uh -huh. So I'm hoping that maybe our friends <laughs> over in the yeah no, we got the department um, <laughs> could a maybe go or help us pick pick them up because delivery. Well, you lot. could also if the LBRT that yeah. Somebody will take care of that. Mark. We'll we'll take care of that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hope you're not figuring out. That. Somebody, will, not in this. somebody <laughs> will be voluntold. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So, um, any more discussion? Sounds like it's pretty oh, well laid out. I think it's a good good one. All right. All in favor? Uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Tracy. Um, that's how I squeeze an agenda item into my. I see yeah, that. I see good job that. that. All right. Uh, Tom Fadden, how are the roads? I don't, I don't remember where I left off last time. So uh, I'm trying to remember where we were. Last time it was a long it time ago. ago. It's yeah. still raining. I gave yeah. the report. Huh? Yeah, you were here. I gave the report. No, I was here. Anyway. anyway. You check the minutes. Uh, so uh, these are the roads that are complete, uh, that we have finished up. And that are well, basically almost 100% except for bridge, bridges. Uh, Reno Road's done, all ditched, all graveled. Uh, Hunter Lane, that's all ditched, that's all graveled. Tucker Brook is done. Uh, Smith Farm Road is done. Uh, we did the uh, bridge abutment over in East Hardwick, got that all stone down over the bank. Oh, did a couple more culverts install. What about the one by Myers? Water leaks. What's that? You did the one by Myers. What's that? Like? <coughs> Morn Lane. Morn Lane. Morn Lane. Yep. Yep. Uh, I think that's about it, more or less. Uh, we went around, we got all the roads somewhat graded before the bus ran and stuff. Uh, let's see, today, I think it was yesterday. Yesterday we started on Carry Road. And today, nobody knows this yet, and you still can't use it. But we did stop the flow of water going underneath the bridge abutment. So the bridge, so the water is flowing back through the box culvert now, covering the water line that's going across. But the bridge is completely done all the way across. We do got uh, rip rat on the side. So you're going to be able to just use it? You <laughs> we got that big slide we got left to do on that road. Yeah. And oh. So that would probably be try to do next week's project on that. But you're going to be able to use that box cover for a while? I think so, yeah. as long as it doesn't it might settle. Heal itself. Uh, yeah, I mean, it stopped running through today after we right. put some of that shore bank in it. Yeah. Uh, the water stopped flowing underneath it. So, we, like I said, we've got the water back up and it's running back through it now. Uh, we still got a little work to do around the bridge and stuff, some more rip rip rap and stuff, but it's, it's reinforced today because we didn't know what the rain was going to bring and stuff like that. But uh, hopefully, in the next week, maybe, depending on weather, and how we can do that down over there, we can get that back open. Wow. So, uh, see, they started on Fisher, Fisher Bridge. Yep. They started there. Uh, they did, right? Fisher Bridge. I see they had the uh, equipment up there. Yeah, I see yeah, they were some dirt around today, so yep. they started getting going. So, after Carry Road's done, we will only have left to complete the pavement, of course, on the, everything. Uh, little touch ups here and there. I know we've got another spot in the east side we've got to do, plus some more uh, patchwork up through there for paving. Uh, so we'll have Stephen Lane to ditch and gravel around that. Uh, Cobb School, uh, Catamount Road, my road, and Cape Brook Road. Cape Brook Road basically just needs gravel. And then we should be pretty well done with all this flood work. So, besides the bridge. You guys have been amazing. So, uh, yeah, just, it's good just, work. It's just yeah. wonderful what you've done. No word on the loader? Oh, greater. Uh, greater should be here tomorrow. Oh, baby. And then, should be. And then we go, yeah, well, baby. then after all this stuff has been brought back to pre-flood levels, then we go into mitigation work. Increase culverts, increase box culverts. Correct. Which all that should be done by the state. Right. Where they should be so the process of it. We're, we're back where we were, but we need to get it go forward yeah, right. in a way that right. is going to better. Way. So this isn't going to happen again. So mm -hmm. the only thing I see wrong with Carry Road, I mean, if, I mean, if that becomes a bridge, we're definitely going to have to do something with the water line here. Yeah. Whether we build, you know, a granite wall to, you know, have like yeah. a little retaining yeah. wall yeah. back 
so the silver water will actually stay above it, create a little fall for it, or what? But we definitely would have to do something with that. For the water line? Yes. There's a two inch water main that runs down Cary Road, oh. and it, it hasn't been exposed. So now we got the water above it, so it shouldn't bother for the winter. So it should not freeze. So. <laughs> It's sure. exposed to the brook all the time. Yes. Yeah, right. but it needs, it, it it needs, needs to be water. Yeah. 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 yeah, right, yeah. correct. Right. It'd be one thing if it actually circulates, but it doesn't. It just goes down and dead ends. Oh. So. It'd be nice if it circulated. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it will someday. Okay. We have, there's a way that it, you we'll can make a loop. It. We'll figure it out. You can. I mean, we'd have to go all the way down the bottom carry road down by uh, the snack bar. Tie yeah. into that two weeks line at <coughs> cost. But when well, they sell that dairy property and they put an industrial park down there, <laughs> then you're going to need we'll to do that anyway, so it'll work out. <coughs> yeah, sounds good. All right. I think that's it. All the trucks running? You just jinxed it. So. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks. We, we do that every have, time. We don't have the chloride truck. Yeah, we don't have the chloride truck back yet. So no. Is the uh, new parts. one getting its spot yet? Need it. No. No chassis. It's supposed to be next month. Next month. Wow. But leaves a turn, man. Yeah. Jesus. You're just, just in time for dinner. Traveling up over Walden. Just in time for winter. Every day going up over Walden Heights, it's like, man, yeah. a <laughs> at least another good month or so. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Tom. Next up, we have uh, Harvick Police Report where Mike Henry is on the Zooms over there. And you're on mute. <laughs> but we can read your lips. But so the party was called to we have Wednesday over from working in the government. We got reassessed uh, by the insurance company and we were able to uh, uh, fix a lot of stuff on it as well. So we have uh, a split on that. Uh, I think it already has a check for it, but the uh, low alley solution is going to be for us to work with uh, the again right from the get go. So uh, they're really busy, but they still are trying to fill us in as quick as possible. We have uh, uh, just want to put out there that we have a records request form that's on our website. And that's for all public uh, records press. If uh, people use that form to fill it out, uh, we can uh, get them the information they're looking for for public records requests. Uh, we've upgraded our security system at our office um, as far as uh, cameras and that kind of stuff. Uh, the system we have is pretty old and antiquated, so we've got that taken care of and that's, that's squared away. Uh, Dan Burnell is starting this week. Uh, he's the new officer. Dan has uh, 25 years of law enforcement experience. Another retiree as well uh, to add to the uh, Army Police. Uh, but uh, pretty excited about having him get started uh, this week. He, he's got one day in so far, and uh, uh, we'll just build on that. Uh, that's pretty much all I've got at this point. People have questions for Mike? I'm gonna thank you for report and keeping it brief. I'm going to roll right into item number one, which is to uh, consider appointing Daniel Brunel as Harvard police officer. So moved. Second. Uh, he clearly has a, a strong resume and comes with good recommendations. And uh, so. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. So uh, I'll, any other, anybody else want to say anything? I just can I ask a really quick question. Is this a, a, a part time role, Mike? Or full time? Can you hear me? Is this it, written? Uh, he's got 25 years of law enforcement experience in the American South Village Police Department. But are you, you're filling a full time yes. position, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Sorry, I won't get every more for it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, all in favor of appointing Daniel. Brunel is uh, officer for Harvard PD. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, thank you, Mike, for continuing your recruitment efforts. 
Can I ask a really quick follow-up question? And maybe, sure. Opie, you can answer This was in place of the Paul Bernard leader. Yeah, does yeah. this make the staffing fairly complete, this hire? Or are we still? It's just it replacing somebody that we, right. we lost, yeah. We're but we're still hiring for? We're still looking for, I mean, we're always looking for qualified yeah. people. Um, and we do have three, two part-timers still. Okay. So, um, so we're at five full time? Six. Six, okay. Thanks. Six full time? Oh, no, no, no. Six five, total. Five full time. Including Mike. Including, including Mike. Including Mike. Right. Yeah. Right. Mike for, uh, yeah. Okay. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Great. All right, thank you. Item two, select board to review presentation provided by Small Business Administration. We have Rick Morales here. I said that right. I really appreciate to the town manager and to the community park coordinator. I'm from Puerto Rico if my accent is weird, you know. <laughs> so um, I came here for multiple reasons. Um, the first one is to, uh, I think that we can achieve that uh, FEMA town hall or speaker bureau. Because, um, I want to explain how to achieve that and the procedures. I already uh, gave the town manager, that's the phone number and the name from, that's from the department of, sec um, of the emergency management, but from the state, uh, Eric. So the, the first request is to him. So then he has uh, to send that information and request that to FEMA. And then um, the uh, office of the governor of Vermont, they then contact FEMA and they decide if they are going to approve the FEMA town hall or speaker bureau to hire. What that means, that's very important because they have done another meetings of, the, of, of that kind. For example, we achieved that in Orange County, in Chelsea, in the town city of Chelsea. And come on, they don't have they don't have media, they are very small. I think that here uh, all the uh, towns that I have visited uh, all, uh, all the people always say, and the government, they always say, hey, Harvey is the one with the most damage. So I think that this town uh, has the resources to achieve that. For example, uh, uh, the place, uh, the, uh, you need like a place with the exits, uh, uh, a secure place. Uh, for example, for 50 people, for 50 citizens. For example, in Orange County, uh, the expect, 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 sorry, we, we were waiting. So uh, sometimes I stumble, expect, expect, expectancy, expectancy. So uh, the expect, expectancy was 50, 50 people, but uh, it was a great meeting. Um, we had there like 10, 35 people, including all the FEMA staff and all the people, and it was a great meeting. So I think that we can achieve that here. For example, also for the sale. Sometimes it's a table we chair for the uh, branch uh, directors. Uh, the, uh, the panel is composed from uh, of the uh, branch director of public assistance, who has our mediation from FEMA, individual assistance from FEMA, all the directors, uh, the state director of, of SBA, but from rural de development, not for not from the division of fire, but from rural development, SBA is going to be there too. So the main purpose of the meeting is so the survivors can go there, ask the questions, even though if they already apply, that, that's not enough because they, they, all the parts of the procedures are important. For example, if they, if they have to appeal, uh, if they have questions, also the government is a board of, of nearby towns, they need, they need information and knowledge about how to fix roads, uh, how to achieve more funds or, or, or to receive on another kind of resources for funds for both. So that's for the government. So they, uh, they have been in the uh, past declaration, they have been like negative. So they can say, hey, uh, we did put like a DRC in Danby or in, or in Cavity, but in Cavity is closing today. But if we are gonna believe all the negative things that, that from the state and from FEMA that they are always like fighting if they extend a declaration or not, Look what happened. They, they they said, for example, FEMA said, "Oh, uh, we are not going, we are not going to um, uh, uh, extend the declaration." Or or and, and, and look what happened. They did extend the declaration until October 12th for the application. So 
it, they were receiving uh, like two, three people per center, center every day, so that's very low. So, and, and, and look what happened, they extended the, the declaration and the only, I, I, um, in my experience here, they only have turned down only one town hall. They didn't accept only one town hall. So I think that we have uh, possibilities to achieve that town hall because they bring uh, they, their employees to so the people can go there and they can help you to upload the documents, to do the appeals in, in that meeting, so to answer you all the questions like there. Sometimes uh, on some town and on some town halls, uh, you can have uh, microphones or you can put the setups are different. You can put like a table for the panel or only chairs or tables and chairs. So every meeting is like different in the setup. But uh, I think that we can achieve that because in in Orange County we didn't have any any media, no nothing. So um, the damages were not they were they were bad, but not like like here. So um, um, an individual assistant from FEMA they are still here. So I think that uh, this town needs that a meeting for for the people so they can ask directly to the branch director. Uh, their complaints and concerns of, of why I received not enough money or why I was denied or how. Sometimes at the end of those meetings they can tell you, hey, uh, I'll meet with you after the meeting. And so that's it. So the survivor can meet with the brand director of, of FEMA, for example, at the end of the meeting. Imagine that and at the end of the meeting they can go to the um, individual assistant employees to upload documents, to do all, they can even find the, the appeal there at the meeting. So that's a good opportunity. And of course, uh, you all can invite, the main purpose of you all, that's why, I, why I'm here, is to share that information. So that that's how we can help FEMA to achieve that. So uh, sharing the information with the nearby town, through social media, website, and uh, here too with the, uh, like, uh, with the local TV, with the local Gazette newspaper from how we hear. I know that you all have so many resources here to, uh, to achieve that meeting. And I'll explain you uh, some positive, positive things about SPA that are not only flyers, how the people use these uh, uh, funds from the, uh, from the SPA that we are a federal agency like uh, FEMA, we were joining. So many people get discouraged with the SBA. I don't know why because they, uh, we, have, we, have, we have already approved more than 80 million, so the people sometimes they don't use this because they, they, they need that money. It's only because they need to complete the procedures with the SBA. Why? Because sometimes to, to find other resources or to apply for other resources like grants, loans, for nonprofits, from the state, from other federal agencies, you need to prove that you apply with FEMA, that you apply with the SBA. You need that letter saying, hey, I was denied. I was denied, and now I can apply for another kind of resource. Because sometimes the people don't understand why. If I I don't need it, or, or I'm going to be denied, why why I have to apply? Yeah, because you need to complete the procedures with the SBA too and FEMA, so you can receive resources from FEMA or SBA or from other uh, kind of agency or nonprofit. For example, if the people, this is more for owner directors, if you complete the procedures with the SBA, not with FEMA, you don't have to accept, to accept the, the law and then SBA might refer you back to FEMA and FEMA might give you all the other disaster assistance like grant uh, or other kind of resources. So at least if you complete the procedure with the SBA, you can have hope to receive something. That's why it's very important always to complete the procedures with the FDA. And how other people use these funds, for example, if they had uh, insurance and insurance, you know that that takes a lot of time. Some people, because we have the one year deferment with 0% interest rates, the people might get the money faster with us, and then when the insurance company do the payment, they pay directly for that loan. Of course, partially totally, depending on the amount that they are going to give you and the, and the amount that you took from the federal government. But that's another positive thing that the people need to review, like for yesterday sometime. So that's another way. Get the money, review your Twitter, so you don't have to wait for the insurance company. For example, also because with the one year deferred now, it's zero percent rate. Because you have that one year, you don't have to pay nothing that one year. You might get the money faster again. And, and, and within that year, you are proactive. You can find other kind of resources, and with that, you pay for that loan. 
For example, our limits are very high. You know that local institution for, for finances, I can't mention the names, but even though if you are a millionaire or you have a good credit score, they are not going to value you hundreds or thousands or one million or more, or they are going to value you only a couple of thousand. You know what I mean? The interest rate here are fixed, they don't change for the life of the loan. So, so, so many benefits that the people need to comprehend. For example, if when they are denied, come on, you are going to apply with a normal institution or you are going to apply with the SBA, or when you receive funds but are not enough, that's the other main issue. That's why we exist and we are part of the puzzle because sometimes uh, the, the funds that FEMA give you are not enough and that's why you have to apply with SBA or we have uh, SBDC, that's our resource partner, so that they have no grant, they have advisors, they can tell you, hey, apply with the SBA or apply with do SBA or complete these procedures or, go, or do this or do that. They, they are a good resource, they are uh, a resource partner from SBA. That means that we give them funds and they receive funds from the state too. So that's another resource, a good resource. So that's, that's why I came here. So I think that we can achieve that theme at home. Hall. It's very important that the speaker's view, that another name is the same. So the people can go there and, and ask everything, and not only for here, for nearby town, even though if some of the nearby towns uh, tell you, hey, I don't have that list. Hey, come on, we come here to share the knowledge because come on, uh, all this, like overboard is around rivers, and you know, it's like not easy to live here. So, that it, all this information is very important because not only for this past event, but for possible future events. And that town hall meeting is not only for, for survivors, it's also for government. The set a board meeting from the nearby towns. They can come, they can ask questions about roads, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Sounds I want to make sure I understand what you're asking of us. <clears throat> Are you asking us to support, to permit whatever you're setting up a meeting yeah, they or mm -hmm. set up a speaker's bureau? You've used both phrases, and they mean, in my mind, very different things. So what are you asking a for? A speaker bureau or FEMA town hall, they, it's the same, it's a meeting. It's a meeting where you have a panel composed okay. of USDA, FEMA, and SBA. And if we want to do it, I would have to request it through Vermont, Emer Vermont Emergency Management. Este. And then they the request that to FEMA. So we can discuss it, and we can um, I can tap into some of the local organizations that have been helping with some of that stuff, the denials, the appeals, and we can decide whether or not we want to organize that and request it and use Hardwick as a central location for the other towns. That's true. Exactly. So I appreciate you coming and mm -hmm. doing your presentation and providing us with this mm -hmm. information. And um, I know how to get in touch with you, and I know mm -hmm. how to to request the the meeting. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, can I just add a couple yeah. quick things? Um, it would just be a good to thank you again. It seems like a good time to mention the part of neighbor to neighbor yes. um, volunteers who are assisting with grant applications. So this Saturday is the last Saturday in person here from 10 to noon, and there are a lot of volunteers, so if anybody has questions, they've already helped a lot of people go through this process, and they've been trained by SD, they are very familiar with SBA, which is great, um, and FEMA, but now that it's been extended to October 12th, yes. if individuals still need help, we will basically match individual grant experts with you. So if you still need support from Heart of Neighbor to Neighbor, um, I think their email is the best. Reach out the hotline or the email. Yep. Yeah. So it's not ending, that support is not ending this Saturday, but it is the last Saturday for open hours at the yeah. municipal building. Yeah, that's great. I went to the library yeah. and I saw the papers and yep. I sent that to my supervisor. Yeah, that's, that, that's very helpful. And I also left to the uh, town manager the uh, a paper with all the DRCs and PRCs information yep. and the ones that are going to be on, are going to be on until October 12th, so uh, those are six, six DRCs and three DRCs. Business recovery centers are from SBA, so the businesses can apply directly with the SBA as an exception. But the general rule is that always 
They go on a friends of non-profit. And businesses, they always apply first with FEMA. So we are going to have six DRCs and three DRCs, at least for now. Um, um, and I think for um, until October 12, like three or four. Um, before that, like one or two are gonna close, but you know that's tentative, like always they're like always opening or changing centers or closing that, but until that deadline, all, all the, of course, all those centers are, some of those centers are, are not gonna be near here, but at least uh, that's a good way to go, even though if it's far from here. It's always best to go to these centers that instead of that, that applying online, that it's not that easy doing those things online. So thank you so much for your time thank and you. Thank you. for being here. Thank Thanks. you. Have a good evening. Thank you. <coughs> All right. So <laughs> excellent. Next uh, is item three, select board to discuss Kerry Road property and a possible sale. I don't have any more information. Well, I don't know how much. <laughs> Um, information you want us to you want me to provide or do you want to just be involved in the discussion it, we can so we okay so we so we have it. so just to lay the groundwork that we, there are some there's a property on Kerry Road yes. that the town acquired at tax sale like five Seven, years? six years six, six plus years ago six plus years ago yep. we've had various ideas for for uh, a purpose for that plan, but thus far we haven't done anything, and so if somebody has a plan. So we got a new plan? What? Maybe? I, I, I don't think there is a plan at this point. Our, the last plan we had was to so relocate we, our critical assets. Yeah. And, and, I, I, and I think based on what I, we just I, observed, yeah. that's, that's not, not a good location idea. for critical assets. Right. I. I'm not biting on that one really hard right now. I mean, we can find no matter where we put our critical assets, there's going to be difficulties. So, you know, um, but I'm good with, you know, I understand if we don't do it too, but I, I don't think that should be the determination. That's all I'm saying. I understand that. We have a piece of property down there that is not collecting any tax revenue. That's right true too. I That's thought where we, left, where we left this conversation, because we did have a developer come ask about that property specifically, was basically figuring out how we can sell property, like what the... Yeah, but we figured out we know how. We, can we know sell. how now. Yeah, yeah. and, and we just, just recently yeah. had a survey. Okay. Right. That was what I was That was the big thing. Yeah, we survey. have a survey, yeah. We have a survey. Yeah. So, to your point, if we sell it, it should benefit should be a tax benefit. If, it's, if, we're, right. if we're going to sell it because it's not generating taxes, whatever's developed there should generate a fair amount of taxes, if that's the reason we're selling it. Right. So, and it should be sold for what it's worth. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a problem with that. Okay. I mean, that's, I don't have a problem generally with selling it, mm -hmm. if that's what you... So I've been approached by um, some residents of Hardwick mm -hmm. that would like, that are interested in the property or possibly the discussion of the yep. property. Um, and if they're willing to speak up, mm -hmm. now would be a good time yep. to do that. I'm very well here this morning, I forget that. Yep. Um, we, obviously, you lost a lot of we, we had We had the hotel. Yeah, yeah, we, I think we all know, yeah. Um, it, it wasn't just the hotel we lost. We had just recently filled with all our personal belongings there. So we literally had to do the clothes in the place to live. So things are. We're, we have some other property 40 miles from here. We're trying to deal with that. Really we, we came to really love the community here. We're really kind of shaping. Yeah. Back out up here. <laughs> we wanted to settle here. So we've been talking with um, Obi and. Well, we 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 like to rebuild another one town, um, but there's two obstacles. One is we lost an acre of land. I don't know how much, but something like an acre of land. We don't have enough land there right. to rebuild, um, and. If we did, we would probably investigate it, right? 
feels like so I really feel for you all um, and I don't know if there's anything that we can I know that there's nothing that we could decide tonight but I think maybe if the direction is for you to keep talking with Opie and to come up with what this could, what this could look like and then bring it back to the select board and we can maybe even a couple of options I think a motel is a great idea for that property yeah. how, how we could make it happen I 
I'm not sure about, but I certainly support the motel down there. Absolutely. One, one issue that, that I'm trying to deal with is kind of a balancing act, because to go to a contract or a construction company, you have to have some sense of the geography, because it's not going to look like it does. Yeah. Well, that massive round spot out near Dollar General is going to have to be used <coughs> towards the back to keep the property up. Now, yeah. if you need to know why. <laughs> We're going to be up. But, um, and so, yeah, I'm just saying if, you should move forward thinking about that. How it would work. I mean, I would really, I don't know if you've got silver boards, but I would encourage you to talk about it amongst yourselves. What do you think would be feasible? What do you think you'd like to see? We're interested in what you know. I, I mean, one thing that I think I'd like to see is a, a rough business plan when you get to that stage. Um, because just the recent projects that the town has been involved in, the construction projects have been really way more expensive than like just four years ago they would have been, right? So, I mean, it'd be, I, personally, I'd love to see uh, a hotel in town again, um, and it is a huge loss, not just for you personally, but for the town, and to not have your motel. But um, I think, I don't know, I feel like I'd need to understand that. You might want to tell the piece of Yeah. Right. Can, I, can I say this? First of all, my background is construction. That's what I've done all my And um, it, it's easy for me to give a general lesson. I know it's going to be around $2 million to have mm -hmm. that building. Because they're not going to be, oh, it's okay, you have this, you have, yeah. because that building is gone. Right. And now we're faced with today's rules. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Second of all, I already have a company in mind. I haven't approached them, but it's EF Wall. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the best companies around for that size project. Um, they just did, I don't know if you've noticed, down in uh, Kelly's, I think it's East Kelly's. Um, they just did a country store, general store, or oh, yeah. take a look at it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you wouldn't even know that that was a building before. They did such a good job, uh, extensive work. That was too many, too. <laughs> but I, just, I just wanted to really get this out there, and the public really needs to know about it, and yeah. I think the community needs to start that discussion mm -hmm. amongst other community right. members. It would not be our decision. I mean, this is yeah. not a, this is not a, something that we're going to decide on tonight, obviously. But it's it's like I want everybody in the community to know that this is a need. So we've decided basically that this property. Let's related, start talking we're about looking it. Yeah. 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 That, that's that's property is seven acres, right? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, mm -hmm. seven point four. Some I wonder if you really need seven acres. Well, it's not so all. It's kind of unusual. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's going to be kind of yeah, but all that is down the road. Yeah, yeah. and then fill that up and down the bottom. Yeah. There's going to be some development costs just on the side. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to say about um, we get into the hotel business. And we've always been post oriented people. And we learn the business as we do. And we know the hotel business. We really better than anyone who's ever had that hotel, or at least as far as we know. And, and we're planning on increasing it by 12 rooms. It was 12 rooms. We intended to do a two-story, second floor, room on room. We so can't people away. Because we were constantly turning people away. Mm -hmm. So as far as a business plan, which I'm happy to provide for you when we get to that point, um, I think it will stand on its own for me because I really feel like we've done that. Um, we were doing short of $300,000 a year at the hotel as a startup hotel. That's and in a town like this. So, um, I just, the other thing I want to say is, we didn't push out the building in the river to come here and get free land, you know? <laughs> We're in a position. We're in a situation. We're not only asking the town to help us, but for us to come alongside the town as well 
to provide something. And that is a good tax base for the building. And it's, it's, a, it's a service to the community. We know the restaurants all are so grateful. They would always tell us all the time. Well, that's 9% revenue. I know that goes to the state. But the state does give money to the towns, too. So it, it really is a reciprocating um, proposition. It's something that's not just stagnant. Oh, we give it away, and you know, you know that, there it goes. We, we, we'll, we'll I also did want to express that. Uh, I, my motivation, because because part of me is like, well, oh, I guess I guess we don't have to work at this anymore, you know? <laughs> if we were a little too busy, now we won't be. Um, so you know, the, the question is, you know, should we rebuild or not? But my motivation really is, I don't know that anyone else would come to Hardwick and build a motel. Mm -hmm. It won't happen. I don't think it'll happen. I don't think it'll happen in the area if we don't do it. And, um, we are willing to do it, but we, we would need this kind of help. So that I, I just want that out there as people think about it. Um, one that, of the, that, they, that you that over. Yeah. One of the things um, uh, I will introduce to the board is that there's a term called a fleece. And I don't know if you're familiar with the term of a fleece, but we made a fleece. If we can't do it under certain terms, we can walk away. Because we don't want to get ourselves in a place where we're approaching 80 years old trying to sell a motel. That would be an awful thing. So, you know, because of the financial crushing debt, that would not be a good thing. So, the fleece is that, you know, we need to find the revenue to do this. We're looking at every grant we can find. We're trying to do everything we can on our side. We're doing the diligent work on this side. And so we're asking the town to understand they are putting in. We're asking them to put in. Um, I don't know how that will look. I'm not trying to impose any ideas. But and it's okay if it doesn't work. Yeah. We'll walk away. But we're, we're friendly. We're not, mm -hmm. not upset with anybody. But yeah. And so that's why it's please. So that's great. And I really appreciate you bringing this to us. Um, when the select board discusses amongst themselves, we, we generally do that right here. Mm -hmm. So we're not, we pretty much are bound by statute to have our discussions. Mm -hmm. I mean, in in the public meeting. Um, so uh, I think the public needs to be comfortable with the idea that we're selling land. Absolutely. First of all, I agree. And then we can it needs forward, to be, and, and they can continue to work on the right. Yeah. How we can make it happen. And, yeah. I mean, it's definitely something that we should have more discussions about. Yeah, yeah, we should have more discussions, and and you should know that we don't have any other pending use. For it's not going to run away from you, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I would ask is, any of you have an idea? We are we really open. Yeah, we're here for We, we awesome. want to find a way. We're not trying to, you know, push anything through or anything like that at all. In fact, we really want. It. With the town and for us. We don't, we don't want to be. One thing I haven't said that I wanted to say <laughs> one of the reasons we love this town is you guys. Open. We've, we've been, you know, um, the electric company with water, you know, every single issue that we've had to deal with has been positive. Every single one, even though it was a difficulty, it still came out positive. And we were very, very warm. Accepted yes. welcome by the people. And you know, everybody gives positive feedback. And we really appreciate that. We really like this town for that reason. We like how it's run. We like um, the people. So. The other? Put that in a minute. <laughs> 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 Put the other thing in a minute. Kind of line up with all the other old people. So. <laughs> so, right. so I don't know whether, as time goes on, some kind of public meeting might be a good Yeah. I think the public yeah. really should yeah. be in, mm -hmm. in favor of for us mm -hmm. if we're going to go forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. We wouldn't want the public to go back. Well, we'll need the public. We yeah. will yeah. decide we're going to include the public Rick's anyway, right? If we sell a land, we're not going to. Maybe we'll include it in Rick's town. Hall. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the ways. Right. Thank you for your service. Yeah, Dave, good luck. Dave, you have a question? Uh, just a comment and an offer for Wiz on the property um, through the Planning Commission. 
trying to get a sense of what's going on in some conversations with OPM, you know, what's there. There's some material that's been thrown together in a PowerPoint that gives an overlay and some photographs and stuff that might give you a better sense of what the property looks like, you know, and um, as far as the, the discussions go forward, what can be done where. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot for coming. Appreciate it. And keep in contact with OP and yep. keep it moving. Okay, I'm going to move us on uh, to item four, select board to discuss required petitions for appropriations and requests to waive the requirement for town meeting 2024. Um, this came, at least to my knowledge, from um, Kathy Hemmons. Who was uh, thinking about the? She didn't. She was thinking it might be difficult for four C's to uh, the for the, for the Craftsbury Community Care Center to uh, get a petition in for um, an appropriation, and she wondered, do we really need to have? Because I think she said because they're, I don't know, getting older and not <laughs> wanting to do it. So I don't want to do it more. So this every three years is the current policy. Right. And so I don't know. I'm not budging on that one. I think the only time we've ever made it not necessary is during COVID. COVID. Yeah. And we did it two times, two. Two years in a row. Yeah. I mean, For COVID. Because of COVID and the yeah. difficulty of being out in public, getting signatures. Um, it doesn't seem like we have that same challenge. So the signature requirement's there for a reason, in my opinion. It's five, Every three years. It's five percent of the population, right, Tanya? It's like twenty. Uh, five percent of the vote. The vote. Registered voters. 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 for this year. Ends up being yeah about twenty. One hundred and twenty signatures. I mean that's. Um, I want to see that. It can be challenging, that. but you know the townhouse has got to do it, and we didn't get it done well, last year, mm -hmm. and so we didn't get to right. get it. Try to get an right. appropriation. I mean, it's a way it's of showing. It's kind of the way it works. It's, way. it's hard to. Um, so appropriations should be made to to organizations that the, the, the entire tax base is that have supports. the capacity to do this. You know what you I'm know? saying? It's yeah. like that's what that's my. It's not Danny Hale giving money to something. It's no. the community did it based on the on the signatures, right? So it gets, on, it gets on the warning because right. it has community support. Right. Tracy, have you I'm just wondering up? if maybe, maybe, are, are they having to do this in, in multiple towns? Yes. Because yeah. of this? Probably. Like in townhouse, we only ever do it in part. Yeah. Right, right. And, and it's true yeah. that the care center does have to go to multiple towns, but while they're receiving but money, so a lot of others that might be why they're yeah. I mean, I know it's difficult, and like shares to it's share his point. But Sometimes that we miss it. Her, your organization, that was a big deal not to make that mark. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it is difficult. But again, for me, it's not Danny Hale just saying I'm going to give this money to the Beagle Club. Okay, it's so. the town saying that you know five percent of the taxpayers telling me. That they support that. So, so that's how I look at it. Does anybody want to voice an opinion or reason why we should look at changing that policy? No. <laughs> so I vote. We, I vote. I propose we move on. Okay. We don't need to vote for anything because it's just. Well, it says we need action. Action. Yeah, we're not. No, we don't, we don't need to take action. action. We already have a policy about it. The action's been made. Yeah. Okay. Right. We're swaying from the act. We're just going to move yeah. on. Okay. So basically, we reviewed it. it we think, trust me. I would, we don't think there's any uh, action needed. If I was going to bend the rules for anybody, it would be, be for Kathy. Kathy Evans. Evans. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> no doubt about that. She knows that too. So. All right. Uh, next is item five: Select Board to review and approve the loan documents from Vermont. Uh, bond bank for the water service inventory project <coughs> and it's there's a note that that's a 100 percent forgivable note yes i make a motion that we approve this the lead service inventory right yeah right i make a motion that we approve the uh loan documents and uh appoint uh op to authorize op to do what he's got to do second second any discussion all um, we've started the project yeah all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, 
Is this all? Yeah. It's this three-page yep. thing. That's yep. a lot, huh? Okay. It's the agreement. What do we have? Chair. <laughs> oh, sorry. Let me uh, move, move this. this. Um, next is item six. Select board to approve the Heart of Downtown Partnership to apply for Downtown Vibrancy Fund Grant Program for twenty-five thousand dollars to support organizational capacity and resources. Yeah, I thought we yeah, talked yeah. about this before. Did we not? Um, All right. We did too. Did it get carried? Uh, did we carry it over? It was over on the last? agenda. Oh, and we didn't and hit it. We they were trying to figure out the insurance stuff. And we got we moved. So it must be she's ready. To, must be she's ready to go. <laughs> you ready to go? I think we did it last time, actually. Didn't we? Well, I'll make a motion. We do it again. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's second. Just, yeah, it's money that's coming from the agency of commerce and community development that the legislature is giving yeah. for, uh, ha has put out for support to each of the designated downtowns, and it's being called downtown vibrancy grant. But that's the the vehicle for which how we get it to. Um, support our downtown so, organization. We did. So the motion, we so the, so what's needed then is to, oh, is what for so the select board to support? Because it's a grant, I felt like we should, uh, With a, the we support select board it. should know about it and yeah. support it and yeah. So, but we're not, forward, but we're not like, we don't need to authorize OP to apply for it or anything like that. We just no, need to say we're gonna support it. No, the downtown organization And you're not asking for a letter of support yet? I don't think we need a letter of support. You'll ask later. They might make that part of it next year, but not this year. It'll so be an annual thing. I made a motion. motion. You made a motion. Did somebody second? I did. Wisdom. You did. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Motion carries. There are two pages that need signatures, though. Um, next is item seven select board to review and consider approval for the building addition architectural design for the townhouse and agree to support and facilitate the project and allow it to go out for bid. So this is all according to our MOU with the town, St. Yeah. Arts MOU with the town. So, um, so can you tell us what happens with, so the, um, does so it, is the town the, the entity that contracts? It's a town building. Yep. So the town, um, Okay, so has uh, committed a certain amount of money from the capital improvement yep. budget, but yep. Neck Arts, I don't think that, does the town, the town has to, right? I'm looking at you. I don't the know. town has to what? Be the. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we're the owner. Yeah, they have to be the be people. Be the lead on it. Okay, um, so the town, so, okay, so. So we've so. identified a project manager. So according to our MOU, um, we're coming to the select board to get the go ahead to move forward on that in this process. Well, I make a motion to go forward with this process. Second. Um. And then it might be worthwhile to, so uh, once the construction plans are complete, sufficient funds are raised, which they are, um, the, the oh select goodness. board will select a project manager for the building addition and, or instruct the town manager to do so. So Which that we have. should be part of you it. found somebody. He mm -hmm. found That's somebody, good. yeah. It's important. It's really important. Amend your motion. Yes, amend it. <laughs> I instruct you, Thanks, the town Amanda. manager, to do so. Absolutely, I'll amend it to whatever I need to. Amanda, do you have a reasonable motion there? <laughs> she speaks very well, well for me. That says, <laughs> what we, what's, what's our motion? Tiny plans. Can you read it back to us? My motion by Danny Hale, second by Elizabeth Dowd, the select board voted to approve the building and addition uh, architectural design for the townhouse and to instruct the town manager to find, and I haven't finished yet. Yeah. Yeah. She's good. Yeah. To, That's okay. Great. To find the project manager. Okay. To find and hire a project manager. <laughs> yes. All right. Acquire. Uh, all right. I like the design, just want to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they look good. good. Yeah. Um, all right, so all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 
Um, oh, I just want to state for the Ooh. record on that one that you guys have done a lot of fundraising for this project and it's been in the works for many years. Many years. Mm -hmm. And many the, years. the town funds that you're that you're using are funds that were have been accumulating. In the capital of They've been accumulating anyway. over the for years for that building. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I was asked about it recently, so I just wanted to. That was my response, and I just wanted to share it again. <coughs> um, two, two, where are we? Eight. Item eight: Select board to authorize the town manager to sign the VCDP Vermont Community Development Program Grant Agreement Resolution for the Judevine Memorial Library. Um, so they had the, that project has a grant through VCDP, and we need to, it's we coming through the town apparently. Yeah, like, it's, an, we own the project. it's an amendment the project. to that grant for the to replace the elevator with the Lula. Right. So they have to do a grant amendment. All right. Yeah. I move that we authorize the town to uh, design. Okay, she can move. She made grant motion. agreement. <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> Wait for discussion. Discussion? Yes. Yeah. Much discussion <laughs> needs to be had in where all the extra money is going to come from for the library project. Because of the redesign, because of the water. Because of everything. Yeah. That's, that's being, that's, I think uh, the library, a uh, library trustee meeting would be the best place to get those answers. Yeah, but I don't think I'm going to go to their meeting. I think they can come to our meeting. Okay, that's a so part, that's a part like, of this change, too. Is that? changing the elevator to a Lula when Jody was here. That's yeah. a big, big budget item yeah. that is going to help them in their redesign. It's a cost savings. Yeah, but I. The I mean, I don't know. The redesign of. Right, so they're gonna we're paying for another money. design, so that's. No, well, that, that hasn't really been determined yet because. So this, that's, my, that's my only point yeah. I'm making is. Yeah. We're talking about undetermined expenses and undetermined um, ability to pay for this project. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is, this table is going to be responsible for it. And the library has been a contentious project for a decade. And the price is just getting way out of hand. Way out of hand. I'm hearing that from people. They're not, mm -hmm. you know, it's not. Other than the fact we can't drive up South North Main Street because potholes. Is they were looking at that today. Yeah, well, they need to fix it, yeah, not look at it. They need to. They um, had them. Because mm -hmm. yeah. they've completed their the contract. Yeah. They completed well, for their contract. Someone right? yeah. unfortunately has to tra been traveling it way too much. It's they ridiculous. Yeah. If somebody's going to get hurt on a bicycle, as there. Mm -hmm. Might be him or his wife where they come down that hill way too fast. <laughs> but no, I mean, I'm just uh, seriously. There's, we're we're in a world right now of no idea what it's going to cost and no idea where the money's coming from, and we're still signing stuff. It's well, like I'm not comfortable with that at it, all. It's so, like a um, when you kick off a construction project. Yeah. You're, hold on, you're yeah. almost like letting the reins go on a on a uh, stagecoach. No. Nope. And slowing Should that not be. stage coach down no. is really hard to do. Yeah, sometimes you break yeah, sometimes you have to shoot the horse. <laughs> Stop it. Good <laughs> <laughs> you analogy. You know that's. But then I, you still got a stage coach. The bottom the line, the, the, it's dead. Then you don't have a horse. Well, no, but you didn't die in a stage coach wreck. So okay, but I, but no, well, and I'm not trying to be mean here. But yeah, I mean, yeah. we are talking about. But it doesn't get any less expensive. I have no idea where we are in, in this project as far as expenses, timeline. And yeah. If nobody's noticed the leaves are brown, they're not going to have a building up come January. Mm -hmm. um, what are things going to cost next year? What's next year? <laughs> Environmental catastrophe, we're gonna, you know, there's so, so many questions, and we're like nine million dollars into this thing. So, but two million dollars pay for it. So, we can definitely, so what we should do, I think, is we should ask the town manager to invite someone from the library board to come to us members about where we're at right. and where it's coming from. But I do think that the motion on the table um, for the Amending the grant agreement with VCDP <coughs> is one step in helping them to help with that. Cost savings. Right, because I'll go because one of the things yeah. was the elevator pit needed to be lower, and right. so this Lula pit doesn't need to be as low. 
Right. And so that helps the design. I mean, ideally, it's not and, a big. And it's just and this is a grant just amendment. Just a that, you know, yeah. Ideally, right. I don't believe that. Not much no. of an ideally up there so, so far. No. So if someone came here from the trustees to do a presentation, they don't have any concrete numbers right now. So do we want to wait until they do? Yeah. I would say that's definitely want to, yeah, we need numbers. I mean, if we don't yeah. have them, it doesn't do them any yeah. good. I mean, I'm not. And I can tell you that here, the clerk of the works or the project manager, <coughs> Steve Pitkin, yep. is doing a great job. Yeah, Steve's great. For the town and the library, and trying, those trying and to find a way literally forward. negotiations between the architect, the engineer, and the town, and the contractor. So well, if they've got Steve, that's probably the best they're going to do. So, yeah. yeah. So, I think you're right, Danny. People have a right to know right. if there's cost increase or if there's savings, and I think when that is. Um, <coughs> able to be presented. It should be as soon as they can present it. We they should, will, I think yeah. they will do that, and I think they're fully prepared to do that. And okay. so is you got an idea of a timeline on that situation? Um, I would say hopefully in the next three weeks. So maybe not our next meeting, but the one after? Possibly. Yeah. yeah. But I can't, I don't, I only go to the meetings, I, the project meetings, I don't have a lot of back and forth between Steve and Joey. I know Jody's doing a really good job handling it. I know she, I, you know, it's not, it's not a, yeah, Jody's, I, and I've, glad and she I, stuck I, with this. I one. understand the, the divisiveness that that project has created or the history behind it in the town. I also, since being the town manager, I have seen firsthand, because I work right across the street from the library, how many people Patronize it. Right? Is that a word? Yeah, it is the word. Pa patronize the library, and um, the neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor hotline during this flood event. Yeah. Diane answers that phone, or or library staff answers that phone, and I would go as far as saying that the library has become the central nervous system for the town in many ways. And it's very, it's an, a very important piece of this community, and I will. And if if I'm gonna make, if I'm not gonna make friends by saying that. I really don't care at this point. I know things cost a lot of money. There's been a huge effort to fundraise. They've fundraised more, I think, almost more than what we bonded for. So I get it. I understand there's a lot of critics out there. And a lot of the critics don't have any involvement with the library. Well, so, <coughs> all the critics have no right. involvement with the library. Right. And there's a lot of people. It's a little bit there's, like complaining about the government when you don't vote. There's, this is true. there's a lot of stuff that happens at that library that, are, that is good for the community. So let's, I propose it's that. True. I, I don't argue with anything you say. Right. And that is all occurring yeah. under the current structure. So we're talking about an addition and expenses that are out of control is what I get we're it. talking about. I get it, I get it. You, everything you just said is happening. Yeah. Just the way it is. In the disrepair that they put it in. Right. And then, <laughs> so they don't have a public bathroom over there? I understand that. Opie, we yeah. can argue all night. I'm not going to argue. Not, you're not nice. hearing me. You are arguing with me. I'm and not arguing. This is an argue. No. So, slight argument. This is, this is great discussion. Yeah. There you go. Um, it's off the point. And it, and it does, yeah. it brings, all, I think it, it helps bring a lot of community viewpoints to the table, which is really important. Um, but I just want to reel us back in to the question at hand about approving the grant agreement resolution, which is going to help the project if they find a way to move forward, which I hope they do, um, but they're going to need this. I vote oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we have, we have a motion in a second, right? Yep. So all in favor of approving the grant agreement, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Uh, yes. I mean, but I, hopefully it does save a substantial amount. It's, it's part of the... The only thing I've heard that we're going to save money on so far. Okay. So, so motion carries. I read his head that. Is Select board reports. Look at that. I have a list of events coming up at the townhouse before our oh, next meeting. A whole list. So uh, to, on, nine, on September 9th, which is Saturday, we have a book signing, a local author 
who doesn't live here, help me. The yeah. um, what's the Dimmick is the last name. Dimmick. Oh, yeah. Yes, I saw that. You sent them to me. They're having a book signing at the townhouse. Yeah. I, yep. Beyond that, <laughs> um, there's... It's uh, a book about uh, heartbreak. Up the uh, no. No, no. No. Growing up... It's a more recent book. It's okay. It's about his life growing up in heartbreak. In heartbreak, sort of yeah. Memoir, I think. Yeah. Um, on the 15th, we have uh, the second or third Black Flag Story Hour. Oh, cool. Hosted by Annie Houston. Yeah. Um, so check the website for our calendar on the website has the theme. I've forgotten what it is at this moment. Um, but it was really fun. The last, last year when she did them, they were really fun. And it, this will be fun as well. Um, the 27th, we have the final public meeting for the VSB the trailhead scoping study with the final designs that the last time that the public gets to give any input before those plans are kind of set for going forward and I Four. don't know beyond that the scoping study that MBDA Four. for the trailheads trailhead. on the LBRT. Sorry, I missed the trailheads. Yep. So, so when the when the LBRT is back and Running, maybe the trailheads will actually be there too, um, like they were not this previous time. Um, and then on the 28th, we have a presentation about the bylaw modification that the planning commission has been working on, and the, I believe Heather Carrington is going to make the presentation with um, um, with Kristen Lady. So those are all happening at the townhouse right down the street. All right. Parking on Creamery Road. Yes. Yeah. Parking is preferable. Parking. Creamery Road. Interesting. <laughs> Parking, yeah. Yes. All right. Um, I'll throw out there Hardwick Trails is celebrating their 20th anniversary Saturday, mm -hmm. September 9th. Uh, it's either 10 to noon or 9 to noon, and I should know. It's 10 to noon. Yeah. It's on the Hardwick Trails website. Hopefully, it won't be raining. Anything free? Hot dogs or anything? Um, it's a good question. You know, I should Wouldn't listen up. Got to give away free stuff. If you want people to show up? <laughs> I like brats. <laughs> <Just pursue. laughs> Me too. Okay. Uh, any other reports? Old business or new business? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'd like to put on a, the agenda: old business, parking, downtown parking. Oh boy. We're not going to get into it tonight, but we For next have time. a discussion yep. on are we going to enforce the parking, are we not going to enforce the parking, are we, what rules are we enforcing, you and I had the yeah. discussion. Can I recommend that we bring back the Planning Commission report for that conversation that talked about recommendations so for... So the issue being is we're picking and choosing what we're enforcing. Yep. Yeah. We need to either decide, you don't, you don't change behavior by picking and choosing which rules you're going to follow. You follow all the rules, or you don't. You change the rules, so you can't follow the rules. And I said that from the beginning. And I, being in town, I've been in town way too much lately. Um, you know, I'm seeing there's a lot of parking shenanigans. Well, either you know, some it's not right for some people to respect the rules, and for some people to just bold face disrespect the rules repeatedly on a daily basis. And it just, if we're gonna not, if we're gonna have no parking, we're gonna have no parking, we're gonna figure out a way to enforce it, we're gonna enforce it. If we're gonna have speeding, we're gonna. Yeah. I'd love to hire somebody to chop tires. It may be, I'd, what are you paying? Because, you know, I'm not against because advertising. I think you'd be good. Yeah, I am. But I'm um, also going to buy a record before I take the job. <laughs> I, I, I would be honest. You know. I would love it. I've called times when I've seen crazy, like I've seen people park the other way yeah. right. on Main Street, and I've yeah. called, and I mean, they'll get they get down there as soon as they can, and then a lot of personally, times the car's gone. Right. Personally, yeah. I would open up every inch of downtown for parking, park every place you could possibly park. That's what I would like to do but in the intersection in anywhere. the intersections anywhere you land we it's fine. Give, uh, can we just give like so that's what i would do sherry but that, we've, we've chosen not to do that <laughs> but it's occurring anyway 
Yeah. So well, why are we paying? You might remember that I did bring this up like three meetings uh, ago and asked if we could have a kid. So I support Sherry in asking that we get this on the next agenda. With so I've, um, with I've, I've done crowd. some work since I brought it up in, in uh, communicating with the downtown business owners and trying to encourage um, <coughs> better behavior from them and their staff so that they're not abusing the parking limits, the existing parking limits. Um, and I think that things over the last three weeks or month have improved somewhat, but there are still some, uh, there are a couple of people who just re will not, um, will not obey. So when those people are parking, I know parking It's also zone. true. Yep. Every day, all it's day long. It's also true that we don't, I believe we don't have quite enough signage to tell people where the two-hour spots are and then to tell people where the longer-term spots are. Um, so we're working on it. I'm taking um, information to the Planning Commission this next meeting, and all right. hopefully we'll have so some I just more to go either. forward. All I want is either. But part of the enforcement issues is that we don't have a person who... Uh, in, an officer who is actually has the time. Well, to we used to have the. Uh, it was usually used to be the animal control officer who did it. Yeah, well, back that's in the day. not the case anymore. I know. I'm just saying that that's how I we handled that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dave, um, on this topic, um, our planning commission meeting is next Tuesday, and it's on our agenda because uh, mm -hmm. basically Sherry got kicked out. <coughs> so this will be discussed. Might have some comments now. Well, I think we know where the, we, you know, yeah, that's fine. We've had discussions with businesses down there. Uh, also, I just want to say it's, it's like the same thing as speed enforcement. You're never going to punish all the violators. And you can punish 10 and 10 pop back up. And it's, right. it's like, we're it's punishing like, zero though. We're, we're not, we're not. And it's really like, there's no, do they care about the punishment? Risk no. versus reward? Risk versus reward. I don't know. I, but, but, the, but we can do so it. Risk versus, whatever you guys talk that about. That only it. exists when yeah. there's a risk. My exact point is right. there is no risk. Right. Mm -hmm. That is what, you know, the, that is the nut here is I'm saying there needs to be a risk. There needs to be some some consequences if we're going to have no parking it means me no parking mm -hmm. you get a ticket right you get three tickets your car gets towed right yeah the people that 10 people you caught will tell the other 10 people it cost me 119 dollars to get my car back right so if that doesn't exist there's no risk so people are like so yeah. let's put it on the agenda for next time or the next time or the time after either one i don't care after the planning commission right. makes They're, their report. Yeah, we'll yeah. we'll we'll forward the results of our discussion. I'm going to try to say My plan is to take it's it to the planning commission and I'd like to take it to a downtown partnership on the 26th. So the meeting, right. the select board meeting after that might be the first Okay, one. sounds good. Well, well I see how it's full. Well, that's, yeah, know, that's a good problem. It's a very good problem, but it needs to be, like I say, I would. It needs to be more orderly. Yes, I I would rather. Everybody's in the lines usually. Oh, we could we yeah. also? That still strikes me. At the next meeting of the time Is after, there... get an update about the East Harvick Bridge, where that's at. Tom talked a little bit about yeah. the abutment, but I just got some questions from people about what's going on with it in town. So. Maybe... Well, I sent you the bridge report, right? I was just wondering if we could do it as an update for. Yeah. Okay. Other people. Thank on you. A, on a so next meeting. parking yeah. on the agenda for what what date? After the twenty sixth. So the first one in October. First October wow. meeting. That's not far. And away. then an official agenda item for the East Harvick Bridge. Or even just in the Tom Andrews report. Okay. Is it being designed or something? No, no, there was a big washout. Ooh. All right. Be great. Any other <laughs> reports? Old <laughs> business, new business. <laughs> Hearing none, we adjourn. Thank you very much, everyone.